Welcome, everybody, to Believers International Online Church, our online church family. We are so blessed, and you're going to be so blessed about the Word of God that's going into your heart and those around you, wherever you're at, whether you're in the fields of Africa, whether you're in India. Thank you so much for reaching out from Africa, reaching out from India, reaching out from other nations, reaching out from the United States, Canada, all over the place. We love you, and we're here for you, and we want to be able to be a blessing to you. We know there's some unreached people groups that we're going to be reaching with this message. And God be the glory for you being raised up and doing exactly what God is calling you to do. So we're a family, aren't we family? Yeah. Well, we're going to launch into a new series. Everybody say new series. new series. And really the title of this series, there's many titles to this series during this Christmas season, but we are going to be talking about the Christmas hymns and carols and the power of God that was placed in these songs that moved them throughout history. There's a reason some of these songs are traditional. It's because there's power in these songs. Today we're going to be talking about the first Noel. We're going to talk about the history, and we're going to break the song down. Hopefully we have time because I've got some other notes that were given to me on the way here and as I was sitting down a few minutes ago. <laughs> so, But if not, we're going to catch up next week. But this song has mighty power in it, and we're going to get into that. The glory of God in the songs and the traditional songs, there was a purpose for it. There was a preaching and teaching purpose to it. Not everybody can go up to a door and preach the gospel to somebody. But during this Christmas season, you can go up to a door and sing the gospel into people's lives. And that was the main purpose for this movement that was started in 1800. We're going to talk a little bit about this. Looking at the history of the first Noel this song was dated back into the 1400s. It was in Latin, it was in French, and then it passed over in the early 1800s to Cornwall, which is an area of southern Great Britain, all the way southern. If you look at Great Britain, you look all the way south, and then you go all the way west. That is the border, and they believe it came over on boats from France. So the mighty power that was in this song, two gentlemen this, the, the, William Sandys and Davies Gilbert, William Sandys and Davies Gilbert put this song in a collection. The reason they put this song in as a collection, if you look at history at the turn of 1800, all of a sudden something exploded and there was men in 1800s that were like Charles Dickens. Remember Charles Dickens, the Christmas Carol? You remember him, the Christmas Carol Scrooge? He was one of the Christians God raised up to stir people's hearts and people's minds. Um, there's some other men that, that he also used as well. David Jones, who went traveling through Ireland and Wales for 53 years singing songs outside of Christmas Day. Before 1800, songs were sung on Christmas Eve and songs were sung on Christmas Day. In the 1800, about 1820, God started rise, raising up men and women that would push that song period out. Not just a day, not just two days, and that's what we have today. We have weeks of songs being sung, the gospel being preached, come on now, over the airwaves, over the internet, every, and, and little do we know when we're singing those songs and other people are singing those songs, they're getting the word of God on the inside of them. Yes. Yes. Amen. Caroling is used to preach the gospel. I remember pa Pastor Carol Joy and I, when we were, we were in, in Poland as missionaries, and Dodic, Dodic, if you're watching, amazing pastor of a church in, in, in northern Poland, and I've said this story many times, but they would not let him go into the mental institutions to read the Bible or preach the Bible. And he said, you know what, he's an amazing singer, guys. I mean, he's full of fire. And he, he said, can I sing to these patients in this mental hospital? And they said, well, I don't see where that would hurt. And so he went in singing the Bible. Aren't the, isn't the book of Psalms? Yeah. Songs? Yeah. He went in singing the Bible, and as he was singing, and Dada can confirm this, 
they were getting delivered. People's minds were being set free from bondages and yokes. I'm telling you, guys, the word of God, when you preach it in any form, God is there in action to confirm his word with signs following. So I want to stir you up. For the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about, oh, the tradition. Listen, guys, praise, the untapped power of praise was taught to Joshua. The untapped power of praise was taught to Joshua when, when God said, and they're like, how are we going to get through this Jericho wall? And God says, I got a ways. It's going to be through shouting and praise. Joshua learned the principles of the untapped power that is in our praise and worship. We'll just, I'm going to get a little ahead of myself. Even in this song, the first Noel, the angels showed up in the power and the glory of God by singing. We cannot be complacent and say, I praise the Lord. I'm just not a singer. Not everybody can record. Right? right? But God has given us voices to sing. And in Revelations 19, verse 1, all the people in heaven sang unto God a victorious song. And I don't know about you, but that's, that's being thankful. And I don't want to get ahead of myself. I already got way ahead of myself, but that's good, though. It's a good introduction. Right? Because I'm going to tell you something. Joshua learned this. Praise invades the territory of your enemy. Right? It has two per- Praise invades the enemy's camp in the territory of the enemy. It also excites heaven, excites angels, excites God, excites Everything that God has. There is tangible life in praise. When you're in amazing praise and worship service, it's so tangible. God is there. And you could tell. I remember being in Poland and being in France and France and they're singing praise and worship. Can't understand hardly word they say, but the tangible anointing is exciting. And when you're excited and you have that anointing, guys, I'm telling you, devil, look out. Because yokes get broken. The untapped power of praise is what people need in their life to be healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So now on to our message. That was just a little commercial about praise and worship. (laughs) But listen, we're going to be talking about the song, The First Noel. And this song has more depth and more meaning than a lot of people realize. I mean, it was birthed out of a heart and a love for the day Jesus Christ was born. Amen? Amen. And so we need to get a hold of the truths. And I'm telling you, this, this is, ho, ho, ho. There is so much in this verse. We won't get to all of it. I mean, we could do a whole series just on this song. And if you want us to, we will, Lord. <laughs> because it is packed full of different things. So anyways, these two guys, William Sandys and Davies Gilbert, what they thought is, you know what? Let's expand this caroling besides Christmas Eve, besides Christmas Day, I mean, it was a stretch to go to Christmas Eve. Let's put these songs together. Let's find them and let's put them together in 1823 into writing. And they found not one song, not two songs, not three songs, 21 songs, guys, they put together for people to use. They were amazing guys. Let me tell you a little bit of history about the guys. William Stanley was a Christian lawyer. One of the guys was a lawyer. That was his profession. But he loved God so much that he knew singing had power in it. Singing would get people to change their mind of going to hell and going to heaven. 
Not good. So you have a lawyer, and then Davies Gilbert, the other guy, he was a wealthy Christian. He was a member of parliament. He was a government official in England. Woohoo! And also, listen to this, the president of the Society of Science in England. Isn't that cool? President of the Society of Science and in Parliament. And these guys got together and they put, the, and, and, and they never met. They kept writing to each other. They never, they never met from some of the stories that I've read. They, they just collaborated and got this book for us to use. It's incredible. Not to sing just on Christmas Day, but we have the songs to sing all year long. And Carol kind of gets upset with me when I'm in March and I'm singing Jingle Bells. <laughs> That's a song here. We have the United States. I'm sure in your countries you have, you have your own songs and you can sing it, but there's nothing wrong with that. Anyways, these guys had a big heart for Jesus and the birth of Jesus. And we come upon this Christmas day. Let's keep talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. So some of the songs, and I, I don't have, I, I, it takes too long to go through all of them, but here's some of the songs, and some of them are familiar. And this is like, they gathered these, so all these songs are from the early, like before 1800, all the way back to the 1400s. I mean, here's some of the titles, just like four or five of them here. I'm sure you heard, Hark What News the Angels Bring, the original title. I mean, we know it's Hark the Herald Angels Sing. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Some people might know that song. God, I love the title. This is just, a, there's a message here. God's dear son without beginning. God's dear son without beginning. Does that stir you up or what? I'm getting to one, it makes me shout. The next one, a child this day was born. That's pretty simple. Yeah, that's simple enough. That preaches the gospel, just, just the title. <laughs> now this one, I got so lit up on, I was studying it. I almost wanted to add it into all the ones we're going to be doing if we get a chance. But this one here is amazing, guys. You need to look it up for yourself. It's called, Tomorrow Shall Be My Dancing Day. Tomorrow Shall Be My Dancing Day. And it's a personal message, a personal song about Jesus. He's singing it. And he's saying, tomorrow will be my dancing day when I see you in heaven face to face. He can't wait to dance with us when we get to heaven. Now, come on, guys. Let's dance here. Dance hard and get to heaven. We're going to dance even more. Amen. Amen. So during the 1800s, you see this. You see this spark. What we have in, in the Western world, and some of you in the foreign countries have probably seen a little bit of it, you know, we have this family day of Christmas. We sing the carols. We got a tree. We got all this stuff. That was actually started in Queen Victorian's day, which is around 1837 into 1901. That was the huge push from the one-day event the Christmas Eve a little bit, that's only a couple hours at night, to the week-long, two-week-long. And I'm telling you guys, I believe God pushed this thing out so we have more time to get more people to Jesus Christ. Can you see that? Some people are like, I don't like to sing Christmas not just on Christmas Day. Hey, I think it's God's idea that we have songs that we can sing as soon as Thanksgiving now. I mean, the retailers are pushing it out. Let them push it out. Let them push it out. I don't care. You know, they're going to be putting those Christmas songs on in their stores um, two months before it. Let them go. Let them preach the gospel, even though they're preaching the gospel with the songs. Come on. Putting seeds in people's hearts. Amen. i got to watch the time here, guys. Hallelujah. So men and women during that time, just after about 1820 on 30 and, and forward, they started spreading. And women started singing carols and were excited about going out and singing to houses. Can you imagine? All of a sudden, some of you are like, what? Is that a Christmas carol? That's only supposed to be on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. What day is it, honey? It's about two weeks before Christmas. But they're out preaching the message of Jesus Christ through song. Come on! Hallelujah. Bring it on! Yes. Hallelujah! 
Glory to God. It's interesting, too, because when um, Washington Irving, he was a writer and a diplomat. Washington Irving. He was a writer and a diplomat in England. Travel all over the world. When he, came, he wrote, like, The Headless Horseman. You ever, you, know, you ever see those, like, interesting stories about fiction? He wrote those. But when he landed in America... Coming out of that Victorian area, all of that Christmas, let's preach Jesus. He, he, he came to America and he goes, what is wrong with the people of America? And he was one of the main people, and you'll have to say this out for yourself, but what I've said so far, one of the main people to stir up Christmas in America going beyond just Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. He said, it's cold it's stale in America, and they're just frumpy and dumb. They're just all this stuff before Christmas. We got to liven this place up. Yeah. And he went every. He moved to America, and he went everywhere talking about Jesus Christ and singing songs. Good stuff, right? We got a heritage behind these songs we hear on the radio, and those that are coming into your own languages, let them come, and you just sing around your friends. You're preaching the gospel, amen, about our Savior. Glory to God. Do we have time for the message? <laughs> Let's start it. So the first Noel, now, the first Noel, this song, the original song, is broken down into nine different parts. I think we just sing one part most of the time. Noel, 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 born was the king of Israel. That's it, Israel. That's probably all that we get out or we, we think we know, but there's more to it that. I love that. I'll sing that. I was singing that, just that part. The king of Israel, the king of Israel. He's born as the king. The king is, king is born. The king is born. I was just like, the king is born. Jesus, you're my king. You can go off just on that, but there's nine different sections, and it's broken down into three different areas. So in the nine verses that I'm telling you, somebody added a tenth one. It's pretty powerful. We're not going to get into that. And for the sake of time, guys, there are so many corrections that some religious people will do with these songs. You're going to see as we go along. I am not about correcting the song. They had that revelation when they were alive. We might have further revelation about the word of God. Come on now. But we're not going to look at those things. We're going to look at the meaning and the positives of the song. Amen. Amen. So we can lift up Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you're looking at, why is that there? What the, why did they put, why did, why, 15 people walk by, why did that, why did that, 17 more people walk by, why did they, I wonder why 20 more people walk by and God wants you to use you to reach other people. So don't be focused, well I'm getting into some dirty territory here, muddy territory, like really like I used to be in the cow fields and my mud would come up past my knees. I'm getting in some muddy territory here. Don't be so religious you're nitpicking, let's get people born again. And put some faith and victory and word into them so they can rise up in their lives. The world's putting people down too much. I said the world's putting people down too much. The church has no business putting people down. Amen. All right, I'll stop right there. I'll get off my little soapbox. Wow. Glory to God. Okay. All right, Pastor Carol's like looking at me. She's probably going to, okay, that's it. No, just kidding. <laughs> so it's broken down into three parts, Noel, Noel. So the first two verses are about the shepherds. And this is all about the birth of Christ. The whole thing is about the birth of Christ. The first two verses are about the shepherds. The next five verses are about the wise men. And the last two verses are about you. Everybody say me. me. So again, the first two verses, shepherds. Next five verses of the song. You can say verses, I don't know how, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can say it, but next five verses are about the shepherds, and then the last two are about you and reaching the world. Hello. So let's do it. Pastor Carol's already ready to go home. Just kidding. Hallelujah. So let's look at this verse, and let's look at a couple of things. First, I wanted to share a verse that I wanted to start and springboard off of. Oh my gosh, Lord, you're so good. So talking about the power of untapped praise Listen to this. Luke 2, and this is verse 11 of Luke 2. For you is born this day in the town of David, a Savior who is Christ, the Messiah, the Lord. 
That verse right there will light up anybody's world. Period. It has the power to deliver someone, has the power to heal someone, has the power to put someone on their feet, because it's all about Jesus Christ. All right, let's dive into this song. And if we don't get through it, we'll, we'll pick up anyways. So the first two verses, if you're going in your Bibles, you're going to go here because we're going to, go, we're going to read the verses in just a second. You're going to go to Luke chapter 2. So the first two verses deal with angels. Now these guys, this is all the revelation they had, guys. So don't give them a hard time because they're going to give you a hard time when you get to heaven. They're going to get, hey, hey, I, I heard what you said down there. You're talking about my, my, my song. Yeah, my song and my song and my... Okay, so just leave it alone. So we're going to go over the first verse. We're going to read it through quickly. Okay, here we go. The first Noel, the angels did say, there was three poor shepherds. Three, I don't know why there's three there. Three poor shepherds in the field as they lay. In the field where they lay keeping their sheep. In a cold winter's night, it was so deep. The chorus says... Noel, 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 Noel. And you can just see some of you right now, you're saying this is the most boring message I ever heard my entire life. But listen, 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 listen. There are four Noels here. There's over 20 of them in the song. So it's nice to know what these words mean. Wouldn't you know? There's more words. I'm going to get into that. Okay, so anyways, there are two different parts to this word know well. The first one is capitalized. And there's a meaning, it's re, there's a reason it's capitalized in, in the, the main original versions. And that is, it was uppercased. The, this word dates back to Latin and French. It's a combination word. It means many things. It means, in Latin, it means birthday. With the French added into it, it means a surprise, rejoice, and singing. Not like, praise good. No, it was like, praise the Lord. You're excited. You're surprised. So this is an incredible way to say it. You can say, sing. One time. Or rejoice. It's Jesus' birthday. You could say it's Jesus' birthday. It's Jesus' birthday. It has a different meaning now, doesn't it? So every time the first word is there, it means rejoice, and it means to sing. Join in. Don't you love that? And it's all about the birthday. Amen? The second one, the lowercase, means Christmas carol joy. It's Christmas, Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol Joy is my wife. <laughs> but it means Christmas as in joy. So when you say this, you could say it so many different facets. You could say, sing joy, joy, joy. You could sing, rejoice, it's his birthday. Rejoice, it's his birthday. You could say, it's Jesus Day. Sing, it's Jesus Day. It's Jesus Day. It's Jesus Day. So if it's mentioned 20 times in this song, these guys are excited. Here we go. So, rejoice, it's Jesus Day. I added that. It's Jesus Day. So you kind of see a little, little, little bit of what, what's happening there. So let's go on to the second verse. And we're going to go on this. And they looked up and saw a star shining in the east, Beyond them far, and to the earth it gave a great light, and so it continued both day and night. And then Noel, Noel, come on, here's Jesus, Jesus Day, Jesus Day, Jesus. This song is all about preaching Jesus, can you tell? But it's interesting, because when you go over, I told you to go to Luke chapter 2, look at this word star. I looked up and saw a star shining in the east. Now, I want to show you this. In Luke chapter 2, we're going to go over to verse 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living. The little red up there, that means we're now in a Bible verse. And then the other one has a little note, a musical note up there, so you guys can kind of distinguish where we're at. And there were shepherds out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at, uh, flocks at night. Flocks. Goodness gracious. They're working guys. Our girls. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. Do you know there are so many women shepherds in France? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. 
Don't let any stereotype keep you back from what God has called you to do. All right. An angel of the Lord, verse 9, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Now, didn't it say there was a star? The song says there's a star that appeared. I mean, it looked like a star because here you've got an angel that is shining like a star. Do not, he's, but verse 10, but the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. They've been looking for him. The Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws, lying in a manger. So these guys see this one angel. And they're like, dude, this guy's preaching. The Messiah. Oh, but that doesn't stop there. And suddenly, everybody say suddenly. suddenly. This is where Pastor Carol can come up and preach on the suddenlies, guys. We're in the last days. I don't know if you're believing for suddenlies, but I am. If you're not expecting them, you're not going to have them or receive them, as Pastor Carol just said. Suddenly, a great company. This is out of the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel. Here comes some power, guys. Praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. Talk about some power. When the angels left them, they gone into heaven, so they went back up. Can you imagine a multitude? Okay, guys, look out. You know, you, know, you, know, you know when you have a big picture or you have a big choir and then somebody gets up to speak and they all kind of just walk off the stage? So here, you just like multitudes of angels are now walking off the stage going to heaven. Nothing like, let's pray the power down. Jesus was already in Mary's tum-tum. Amen. So they, didn't do, they just announced it. Wouldn't you like someone to announce that? Jesus just didn't come in the world going, is that, is, that, is, that, is that the Christ? No. God showed up. And God will show up in your life. You notice that, the, that these shepherds were doing the business. Come on now. They were doing the business that they needed to do, minding their own business, and let God work, and God showed up. Don't put your hands in everything saying, God, this is the way I want it done. Oh, this is good. <laughs> Let him work because you can't do it anyways. Your faith, I won't get to all the other subject. We can get the subject of faith right here. Let's, let's move on. I think, I think you got what you needed to get, get right there. And the angels left them, gone to heaven. And the shepherds said one to another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. They're spreading the word. The shepherds are spreading the word. What are we supposed to do? Spread the word. Let's invite people to church. Let's invite, let's do a musical. Let's do something. This is the time of the year to just go for it. Verse 18, and all who heard it, heard it, were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Because the power of God is on it when you talk about Jesus. This is the season, guys. Hallelujah. This is the season. This is the season to get people to see Jesus Christ for who he is. Amen? So these shepherds were doing their own business, and God showed up and revealed himself. As we pray for others, we're doing our own business, they're doing their own business, but as we pray for them, as they're doing their own business, God will reveal himself to them. Isn't that good? So during this Christmas season, I'm going to wrap it up here in a second if you haven't noticed already. Because we're only through two and we have nine to go. So we're not going to, we're not going to make it today. I had, I had plans. I had good plans. I had speed plans. But listen, I want to, I want to say a couple scriptures. And I want to stir you up in this untapped power of praise. This, this, this phrase dropped in, in my heart just about 30 minutes before I came here. I heard another, one, another person say it many, 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 many years ago. But the Lord kind of just 
dealt with me. And so I want to talk to you a little bit on a side journey about praise in your own life. It's important. Now I've stirred you up. Now you're listening. I'm going to say a couple of verses, and you're welcome to write these down. If you have a pencil, write them down. Go back and study them for yourself, because praise has excitement. If it doesn't have excitement, you know, I, 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 like, I like, you know, and, and, and I, love, I love praising God, and I love shouting. I love lifting my hands, and I know the Lord's dealt with me years ago about lifting my hands and speaking and talking to him during praise and worship. So if you see me over there, and I'm talking to him, and I'm loving on him, that's basically what I do is I love on him. Oh, Lord, I'm so grateful. I'm going to heaven. If that's not something to praise God about, I don't know what is. <laughs> Psalm 34 says this, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. How many times? All, all times. His praise, and that's not the end of it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why is that? There is, it's like an engine. You know, if you turn off an engine, boom, there's no power. When you're praising God, it's building that energy up. It's building that power up. Thank you, Lord. You, you, I, I know you hear me all the time. I thank God all the time. Some people think I'm crazy. I, I always say I have a heart of thanksgiving, even when I don't have a heart of thanksgiving, to stir myself up because then I get to that place where I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful for what God has done. I will bless the Lord, Psalm 34, 1, at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. First Chronicles 23:30. First Chronicles 23:30. And of course you're watching this you're, you can you can get it from there. And it says this, I stand every morning and praise the Lord. I stand every morning and praise the Lord. Is that honoring him? In the morning. I stand. I'm standing up in the morning and I am praising the Lord. Is that good? Psalm 113.3. Psalm 113.3. And this is good. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, his name shall be praised. And I say by me. It's just something we do. It's a lifestyle. Can you see this? It's like wearing your clothes. Do you wear clothes? Some of us do. I'm just kidding. All of us do. <laughs> That's our lifestyle. We have a lifestyle as humans. We wear clothes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Even if it's a little thing, whatever it is, <laughs> we wear clothes. Or in some like Papua New Guinea and others, your clothing is all of your headdresses and your earrings and your shoes. We wear clothes. Praise is our clothing. We are always wearing praise. We are always grateful for God. Just like the song, Noel, Noel. We're excited and rejoicing about that. Glory to God. Just a couple more scriptures. These were like, you could tell I've, I wrote them down like on a piece of paper because I, I needed to get them out today. Um, Psalm 119.62, wrapping up. Two more scriptures here after this one. Psalm 119.62, at midnight, I will rise to give thanks. At midnight, I will rise that could be two different things. That could be when you're going through so many tests and trials, it feels like midnight in your life. You're worn out. You're just ready to give up, go to bed, so to speak. No, here it says at midnight, I will rise. I will rise. I will give thanks. Amen? And then, you know, if you wake up in the middle of the night, you're just like, well, you know, just, some people are late people. Some people are morning people. I rise up early in the morning and give thanks. But at midnight. So this is, there's all occasions, guys. I mean, he, he, there's so many different scriptures about, well, I, I just like to praise God in the morning. You can praise God in the morning, all day long, continually, all the time. Glory to God. What is praising God? Praising God is, is, is loving on the Father and thankful for everything he's done. Worshiping and honor him. And have, Dad, I love you, man. You're amazing. I got, I, I'll tell you what, this is going to be interesting seeing how this is going to change for me. This is going to be interesting seeing what you're going to do here. 
That's faith, guys. That's put in action. Because faith without works is dead. If you're like, well, I'm, God's going to move someday. Mm, ain't going to move. Amen? Put faith and action together. Oh, we can go off on another subject there. Uh, Psalm 84, 4. How blessed are those in your house. They are ever praising you. How blessed, this is Psalm 84, 4. How blessed are those. How blessed, how blessed, how blessed are the people of praise, it's saying here. How blessed are the people of praise. How blessed are those in your house. They are ever praising you. You And Psalm 146, we're going to end it right here. Psalm 146, 2 says, I will praise the Lord all my life. Psalm 146, 2. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. And I was looking at it this morning going, wow, that has, that has two things in it there. I will praise the Lord all my life, but just not there. It goes even further. And I will sing and praise my God as long as I live. Guys, we're going to live forever. Amen. It's just something. We just got some clothes on, guys. We're going to be clothed in some cool stuff when we get up to heaven. But we're clothed in righteousness right now. Come on now. We're clothed in healing right now. You know, I can tell a couple of little subjects I need to deal with here. But I'll tell you what. Healing belongs to us. I said it belongs to us. If it belonged to us in the garden, Adam and Eve, it belongs to us today through the second Adam of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your might. Thank you for, as we praise, you invade hell in our lives and you get excited in heaven because we are doing some work for you, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the praise, Father. In this message of this Christmas season, we're excited about the name of Jesus. We're excited to sing carols. We're excited to just give you glory, Father, and we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Now, while you're watching this, or if you're in here, and you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, to be your Savior, oh, man, you've heard it before. It's that born-again thing. Yes, it's that born-again thing. It's being born of the Spirit, being born anew. The Bible says you are born a new creation, never before existed. That's awesome. Your old life passes away a new life starts beginning for you yes you have to deal with some things in your old life but i'm telling you what with jesus christ they're like they're hardly they're, they're nothing compared to what they used to be you need to give your life to jesus christ and make him your lord and your savior romans 10 9 says this if you declare or speak with your mouth and say jesus is lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen? And during this Christmas season, we're going to keep it short and sweet. Let's just reaffirm our faith in Jesus Christ and affirm our real faith. Everybody say real. real. Our real faith and belief in Jesus Christ today. And let's say this after me. Let's confess, make this confession together. Father God... And mean it with your heart, guys. If you've never said it before, just your heart of hearts, say this with all of your heart and mean it. Father God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus, that he died on the cross for me. That he paid all the penalty of all of my mistakes I've ever done. I accept your sacrifice, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I confess you as the Lord and the Savior of my life. And from this day forward, I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, come see us afterwards. If you said it and you're on the internet, look at our website, believersinternational.church. Brand new to Jesus on there, email us. 
tell us. We want to show you some information, give you some information so you can, you can see. We want to be helpful to you because this is a grand life you're now in. People around you won't understand it. But I'll tell you what, the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you, and you're going to understand more of the Bible than you ever thought you'd imagine right now. Reach out to us. We love you. Glory to God. Well, guys, we're going to end the service right now. We're going to be singing a song, the first Noel. We'll put it up on the, the internet for you guys. And just remember this verse. We end the service in every time we end our services. And family, we love you. Thank you so much for your prayers. They mean so much to us. As we take this gospel around the world, we, we're just following the Lord, and you're part of us. You are family. I said, you are family. We are in this together. So if you need something, reach out to us. Thank you for your gifts of love. Thank you for financial support. Bless you guys. We love you guys. And so... You're going to have a good week. I don't know who it is out there. You're going to have a good week. You're all going to have a good week. But somebody out there is watching. You're going to have a really good week. Things are changing now. Things are changing now for you. God's put some things in your heart. Get with him after this ends. Just get some peaceful time with him. He'll talk to you. He'll show you things. Get in his Bible. That's how he shows me things. I start reading, and he starts speaking to me. Amen. So glory to God. And we end every service saying, for the kingdom. It comes, to Colossians, it comes from Colossians 3.17. I'll read it from the Message Bible. Let every detail in our lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master, Jesus Christ, thanking God the Father every step of the way. Everything we do is for the kingdom. On the count of three, let's say, for the kingdom. One, two, three, for the kingdom. Have a great week, guys. Watch more of our stuff on BelieversInternational.Church. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.